If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. Affordable. Good. Affordable. There's a reason. Affordable. 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 If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep your plan. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. It's the craziest thing in the world. Well, Obamacare is a mess. Pretty much everyone agrees with that. It's vaunted insurance exchanges are falling apart. Almost 70% of counties in the U.S. provide just one or two insurance options at this point. Some entire states like Oklahoma and Wyoming have just one insurance option, and prices are blowing up. Last year, seven states saw the average price of a plan rise by more than 50% in a year. In Arizona, for example, the price doubled in a single year, rising 116%. Well, tomorrow, the House is voting on the Republican Party's proposed replacement to Obamacare. Will it fix the issues or will it add its own? Whether the bill passes or fails, HHS Secretary Tom Price will be in charge of the aftermath and he joins us now. Mr. Secretary, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks, Tucker. Wonderful to be with you. Well, so repeatedly during the campaign, candidate Trump promised universal coverage and he did it pretty explicitly. In one interview with CBS, he said, everybody's got to be covered. I'm going to take care of everybody and the government's going to pay for it. And the public seems to agree the majority say they want government to provide health insurance for all Americans. This plan, according to CBO, will increase pretty dramatically the number of people without coverage. If you were to ha even have that number, is this plan moving in the direction of the president's promises? Yeah, the reason that it is, Tucker, is because the plan isn't just this bill. Uh, right. The plan is this bill plus the items that we can work on that are significant at the, uh, at the department, as well as the other pieces of legislation across state lines, uh, medical malpractice reform, all the kinds of things that, 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 are, that round out uh, the kind of reforms that we've been talking about for, for years. Right. So taken together, yes, every single American will have access to the kind of coverage that they want for themselves, not that the government forces them to buy. The costs will go down and the choices will increase significantly. And that's, you, at, at the top of this uh, this segment, uh, the president said, you know, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Well, you're going to actually be able to do that. If you like your plan, you're going to keep be able to keep your plan. You're actually going to be able to pick the plan that you want. Uh, not, again, not that the government forces So this it. whole series of reforms, not just the bill being voted on tomorrow, Absolutely. does move us closer, you are saying, to Canada at Trump's promise to provide universal coverage to the country. It, it, the, the, the entire plan encompasses all of the kinds of things that conservatives and Republicans and the American people have been talking about for the last seven years. Seven years tomorrow is when the bill was signed uh, signed into law. Well, sure, but I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't describe the president's promise to provide universal coverage as conservative tr in the traditional sense. But he did make that promise. I just want to know: is that the direction this administration is moving toward universal coverage? What he said, what I've said, is that yeah. every single American ought to have access to the kind of coverage that they want for themselves, not that the government forces them to buy, and that's the key. So that does sound conservative, so why are all these conservatives in the House making angry noises about it? Well, because it, it, the fact of the matter is that they ha aren't looking at the entire plan. Uh, if, if you just look at this bill, which is what the Congressional Budget Office did, and I think they made a significant error on the, on the, on the coverage amount, uh, but what they said is that the premiums are going to come down over a period of time, and, and that the costs are going to be less, and that, uh, that we're going to be able to have the kind of flexibility at the state level uh, for, for uh, governors to put in place the Medicaid. Medicaid uh, vulnerable population program that they want. Again, right. uh, they know best. The federal government doesn't know that. So. so, so since you know, it's been seven years since Obamacare became the law, and, and a lot of smart people have thought about it during that time. Have Republicans on the Hill considered a, the health care system of any other country as a model? Is there any place in the world that does it better than we do that we ought to emulate? Uh, when, when we were working on our plan seven years ago, eight years ago, we actually looked at a lot of other uh, a lot of other countries. It's difficult because the population is is uh, different, and it's uh, for sure. mo mo most countries have a more monolithic population. Uh, but for example, uh, uh, Switzerland has a program that allows for every single person to pick the kind of coverage that they want. It's paid for by the government. It's called a single payer. But in fact, uh, the, the, the citizens are able to select from a private array of, of, uh, of coverage policies. So what, what we're trying to get to, again, is, is making certain that it's patients and families and doctors that are in charge of health care, not Washington, D.C. The way that you do that is to make it so that individuals all across this land are able to pick the kind of coverage that 
they want. And you're convinced that that's what people want. More than security, they want choice. I mean, if, if, and that is often the choice between something that's guaranteed and knowable, and then, on the other hand, the option to pick between a, a bunch of different things. You think people want options more than security. What, what, what I do know, and, and what the, what, if you ask the American people what they will tell you is that they don't like what's going on right now. Right. You've got 20 million people who've said fooey on the whole program. We're either going to pay the penalty or, or, or ask for, 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 for a waiver. Uh, and, and you've got another 20 million individuals that, uh, that, that aren't getting the kind of coverage that they want. So uh, with th this, is, this is a program that, that I think will work extremely well. And we are, again, focusing on the individual across the land who want to, to be able to select their coverage. And finally, wouldn't it be, I mean, there's this persistent percentage of the population that has trouble keeping health insurance for whatever reason. Maybe it would just be a good idea to guarantee, I don't know, the bottom 20% of the country health insurance is deregulate everything else and let people do what they would. Yeah, if, what, what we want to do is make certain that the individuals who are, are oftentimes priced out of the market because they either have a pre-existing illness or, or, or injury, or they're, they're, they have huge health challenges from a, from a cost standpoint, make certain that we're able to cover those individuals. If we're able to cover those individuals, the price for everybody else comes down. Secretary Tom Price, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks so much, Appreciate Carter. It.